process. Okay. Now you see my screen? Yeah, I should see your screen. Perfect. So, yeah, so here, yeah, the next speaker is Uriel Morchan from, uh, from ICTPA. So the, the, his talk is a matter, the title of his talk is a matter of correlation. So the, the, the floor is yours, please go ahead. Thanks a lot, Raul, for the introduction. And thanks a lot to the organizers, both Alice and Edgar, uh, for, well, for giving me the opportunity to share with you some of the work I have been doing recently. Today, I want to talk about a topic that I have been very interested in for the last couple of years. Typically, in atomistic simulations, what we find ourselves doing a lot of the time is trying to make sense, trying to have a qualitative picture from a, an ensemble exploration done with MD simulation or Monte Carlo simulation. Um, but beyond having a thermodynamic or a quantum characterization of our problem, what chemists usually seek is to have a qualitative picture they call a molecular mechanism, which is a sequence, a step-by-step -step sequence of fundamental events that give rise to certain process they are interested in. This process can be a chemical reaction, it can be a phase transition, it can be conformation and exchange, uh, many, many things. But uh, just as, a, as an example of what I want to say here, uh, in the screen we have liquid water, okay? And there is a very important process that is happening here, okay? I won't tell you what it is, but it's a very important and it's a process that is essential for life. But I just want to show you that just by inspecting uh, an ensemble or, or a trajectory for molecular dynamics, it's really difficult to extract a, a qualitative picture of what's going on. One typical approach that chemists use is the chemical intuition, which is really powerful. What they do typically is they compose the problem into well-known, previously established interactions, and then instead of studying the, the fate of all of the particles in the system, they study the behavior or the trajectory or the evolution of this interaction. This is a, a, an interesting reduction of the dimensionality of the problem and very, very often this allows chemists to come up very quick with a, a qualitative picture uh, of what's going on. But there is no guarantee that this type of a, a intuitive procedure will work. And this is particularly true in the case of uh, liquids or macromolecules where uh, the global processes are a, a, consequence, a consequence of an holistic combination, statistical combination of these interactions. And uh, just by looking individually at the interactions, it's quite difficult to get uh, the picture that we want. I find incredibly uh, uh, fascinating how lately the data science approaches are percolating into the atomistic simulation uh, realm, uh, very often providing uh, pictures that are incredibly, uh, uh, incredibly good in terms of interpretative and, and, and predictive power. And in many times they uh, replace the previous existing uh, intuition based methods that I just uh, mentioned. And this is what I would like to talk about today. Uh, the system that you have on the screen is called CRISPR-Cas9. This is a, a protein uh, that catalyzes a very, very important reaction. This is a protein that has been discovered recently. And the reaction that it catalyzes is it recognizes a sequence of DNA and then it cuts uh, uh, another part of the DNA, okay? This type of, of, of process can allow to have an addition of the DNA in living beings, okay? So this is a, a, a very, very interesting technology that lately has had a lot of attention. But 
it is a quite, quite complex system, as you can see, many, many atoms, okay? So, in order to understand it, in order to have a qualitative picture, and in order to, to tackle a couple of questions that are open in the field that I will talk about a little bit, what we did was borrow a concept from social network. Uh, in, in, the people that make money with social network, the people that are interested in our private lives, what they uh, like to do is to cluster ourselves in groups of people, okay? And in, the, in that way, what they can do is, uh, for example, find groups of people that have different, different political opinions or groups of people that share uh, some idea or a work environment. So we borrow this idea uh, in order to study this protein and to decompose this protein into communities that now uh, these communities, what they have, they, like the physical, uh, 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 the, the physical reasoning behind these communities, these are atoms that have a correlation that is much larger within within the community than between communities. Okay, and with this type of analysis, we reduced the the, the dimensionality of our problem a lot, and now it's much easier to have a qualitative picture of what's going on how this protein works in particular one open question is this protein uh, has a problem which is that it makes uh, sometimes it makes errors it cuts the dna when it shouldn't cut the dna so uh, an open line of study is how we can tune or change or mutate this protein in order to avoid these errors to happen of course, if we put this to treat a patient, uh, uh, we cannot uh, afford to have this type of errors, okay? So, uh, uh, we try to tackle this question, and what we know is that these three communities are the one in charge of the recognition of DNA and for the activation of the of the catalytic process of the protein okay so just by studying uh, something i didn't tell you is that the the black lines between communities are the crosstalk between the dynamical crosstalk between the communities so the higher the the, the thicker these black lines means that the, these communities have a, a stronger interaction okay so we can now introduce mutation on the system in order to tune this uh, crosstalk between communities, and this will affect the, the catalytic activity of the protein, okay? Sorry, a question. Yes. Uh, how you calculate the interactions and the uh, to find the thickness of the lingers? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. What, what, what we do is we use a, a two-value mutual information uh, of every particle in the system, and then these uh, uh, lines between communities are the total uh, two-value mutual information between the two communities. It's like a, a, a correlation between the communities, okay? A dynamical correlation between the motion of the communities. Does that answer your question? Thanks, yes. Perfect. So another thing that we did is, well, there's plenty of algorithms to find uh, shortest paths uh, coming from graph theory or from, um, from computer science. And we were also interested in that because, uh, well, in particular, we were, we were interested in finding uh, uh, the, the paths or the amino acids involved in the paths that communicate two distant sides of the protein. Uh, and well, did we, this we did with the Dijkstra algorithm, but there, there's plenty of algorithms to do this. And the reason why we were interested in this is because this protein has two important sites. The site where it edits the DNA, it cuts the DNA, this is a catalytic site, and the site where it recognizes the DNA, okay? This is the site in green and, and, and red, respectively. So, there is something that must happen in order for this protein to work, and is a communication between these two sites, okay? 
So we wanted to tackle the question, how these site exchange information, okay? And in order to do that, we use this algorithm of finding optimal paths. In our case, uh, the optimal paths were basically uh, paths that maximize the correlation of the atoms that are involved in the path, okay? And in particular, we study the, this optimal path through this uh, domain of the protein, which is called HNH, which is one of the most important domains of the protein. This we did it in collaboration uh, with uh, Julia Palermo, with uh, Victor Batista, and with an experimental group from Brown, uh, uh, from George Lisi, and we find a, a, a pathway that communicates these two sites that also very interestingly, it correlates very well with the uh, experimental pathway determined with NMR, okay? These are the, the, the solid balls and the transparent balls are the, the, the computational pathway. So we, find, we found the pathway and now that we know this pathway that communicates these two sites, we can propose different mutations on, on this pathway, on these amino acids that belong to this pathway in order to switch, to tune the communication between these two sites, of course, tuning the activity of the, pro, of the protein. One example of this is... Oh, sorry, Uriel, you have four minutes, okay? Perfect, I'm, I'm about to finish. Uh, these are two examples of mutation where we know that the activity of the protein uh, gets disrupted, okay? And what we show here is uh, uh, in these mutations, we show that the pathway that communicates these two important sites of the protein is completely disrupted, okay? So now we can understand why this mutation was making uh, the protein inactive or was disrupting the activity of the protein, and this is because it disrupts the uh, uh, signaling uh, uh, pathway between these two important sites. Okay, I will wrap up here. I have a little bit more to tell you, but let me wrap up here. I will go to the conclusions. So, in the conclusions, I would like to show you uh, uh, very quickly a lot of the things that we did and a lot of the people that participated on this. This is another case where we developed a, a method a method in order to understand very simply uh, uh, another type of problems in biochemistry. This was done with Victor Batista, Ivan Rivalta, and Christian Negre. Well, this is the project I just uh, mentioned. This was done with uh, Victor Batista, Julia Palermo, and George Lisi. Also, we use this type of methods in order to find um, water channels in a very, very important protein, which is the photosystem 2. Uh, this was done with Victor Batista and Crystal Rice. Uh, more recently, we are working with Ali Hassan Ali and Ricardo Franklin on, well, what Ricardo already mentioned, is a, a soap-based uh, artificial photosynthesis. Uh, we are using the same methods in order to understand uh, those kind of systems. We are also working with Hatale Sisi uh, and Ali Kassan Ali on the understanding of the optical properties of BSA. Uh, I think Hatale uh, 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 will talk about this. Uh, also, we use similar techniques. And finally, we use this for a very, very different problem uh, to understand electron transfer in uh, microbial nanowires with a very, very different uh, physical principle but with exactly the same uh, data science methods. And this was done with Nikhil Malvankar and Peter Dahl. So thanks a lot to everyone. And if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Well, thank you very much, Uriel, for your nice presentation. Uh, Leili has a question, so please go ahead. OK. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, I had a question about uh, uh, mutation of the protein. Sure. Um, how do you know that when you mutate some specific part of a protein, uh, yeah. folding in other uh, parts is not this is not um, important? Do, uh, did I ask my question clearly? 
folding, you mean folding in the, of the protein in other parts? Yes, for example, yeah, you mean... Everything is included, no? I mean, we run a molecular dynamics of the new system that is mutated, okay? Uh -huh. And yeah. we see what happens with the, with the uh, elastic pathway, okay? We, we see what happens with this pathway that we determine. So, in principle, if there is a, a, like a, one process, uh, like a conformational process or something like that, everything is included. Uh -huh. There should be a problem. Thank you, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, okay, we have time for another question. No? Uh, can I ask a question? Okay, sure. please ask me. Uh, so, uh, I, I was wondering whether uh, the, the way you generated these uh, correlation maps using mutual information, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you said that the higher the mutual information between uh, these two units, uh, yes. then higher the uh, um, interaction strengths. So, uh, like uh, mutual information has statistics of the entire dynamics. Uh, is it is it just the interaction? Can we decompose into the level of just the interactions? Can we conclude that? Of course. I mean, we start at the level of just interaction. But but wait wait one thing. We shouldn't uh, uh, mix interaction as like physical interaction as like a potentials with uh, the, this uh, mutual information, which are statistical correlations. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what that's what that's what my question is. So, so uh, this is not interactions. These are let let me show you what it is. I have actually a slide here. Uh, this is the two-body mutual information. It is made of the difference between the marginal channel entropy and the joint channel entropy. Okay, and basically what this does is compute the correlation, the dynamical correlation between the fluctuation of particle I and particle A, uh, particle J. And we do this for all the particles in the system. And then we can come up with a total uh, mutual information between two communities, basically as the sum of the total interaction between the two communities, right? Yeah, so, so this is like a uh, strength of correlation between uh, the two units. Exactly. It's not, it's it's exactly not right. strong interactions are between the two units. Yes. Yes. Is that sure? Thank you. So, sorry, may I ask a question? Sure. Uh, just, um, I would like to know: Is there any relation between the link here that you have and the parameters in the elastic network models as? vibrational elastic model that usually, usually people use to find the elastic behavior of the system. Uh, I really don't elastic know. Network. Yeah. You know the elastic network models to find the uh, correlation between the motions of the particles. I actually don't know these elastic network models, but basically this is a uh, the correlation between uh, the atomic fluctuations throughout the molecular dynamics. So this has uh, not, it does, this doesn't have any harmonic uh, assumptions. Mm -hmm. This is the, like, the, the standard way of computing the correlation between two, any two particles in the system. So there is no right. model in terms of the way we compute the correlation. The model is after, the model is in order to analyze that 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 data, uh -huh. but okay. uh, yeah. Okay, so we, we should stop here. Thank you very much again, Uriel, for your.